I'm going to be reading about the capuchin monkey. So, the capuchin monkeys are New World monkeys of the subfamily Sibinae. They are readily identified as the organ grinder monkey, as they've been used in many movies and television shows. The range of capuchin monkeys include some tropical forests in Central America and South America, as far south as northern Argentina. In Central America, where they are called white-faced monkeys, Carablanca, they usually occupy the wet lowland forests on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica and Panama and deciduous dry forest on the Pacific coast. Etymology. The word capuchin derives from a group of friars named the World Order of Friars. Minor capuchin, an offshoot of Franciscans, who's wear, who wear, sorry, brown robes with large hoods. When Portuguese explorers reached the Americas in the 15th century, they found small monkeys whose coloring resembled these friars, especially when the robes with hoods down went in their robes with hoods down and named them capuchins. When the scientists described a specimen thought to be a golden-bellied capuchin, they noted that his muzzle of, of tan color with the lighter color around his eyes that melts into the white at the front, his cheeks give him the looks that involuntarily remind us of the appearance that historically in our country represents ignorance, laziness, and sensuality. The scientific name of the genus Sebas came from the Greek word kibos, meaning a long-tailed monkey. Classification the species the level taxonomy of this genus remains highly controversial and alternative treatments than the one listed below have been suggested. And in 2011, Jessica Lynch and Alfaro proposed that the robust capuchins be placed in separate genus, Sabuchus from the great seal capuchins, formerly the C. capuchinus group, which retained the genus Sibus. Other primatologists, such as Paul Garber, have been using this classification. According to genetic studies led by Lynch Alfaro in 2011, Grass seal and robust capuchins diverged approximately 6.2 million years ago. Lynch Alfaro suspects that the divergence was triggered by the creation of the Amazon River, which separated the monkeys in the, in the Amazon north of the Amazon River, who then evolved into the Grassal capuchins. Those in the Atlantic forest to south of the river evolved into the robust capuchins. Grassal capuchins have longer limbs relatively relative to their body size than robust capuchins and have rounder skulls, whereas robust capuchins have jaws better adapted for opening hard nuts. Robust capuchins have crests and the males have beards. All this known platyrine um, and member of Sebadei, Panamis bus transitus, is estimated to have lived 21 million years ago. 
Is there all this no possible evidence of a mammal tra traveling between South and North America? Physical characteristics. Kibushins are black, brown, buff, or whitish. But their exact color and pattern depends on the species involved. Kibushin monkeys are usually dark brown with a green off white coloring around their necks. They reach a length of 30 to 56 centimeters, 12 to 22 inches, when tails are just as long as the body. On average, they weigh from 1.4 to 4 kilograms, 3 to 9 pounds, and live up to 25 years old in their natural habitats. Habitat and distribution. Kabuchins prefer environments that give them access to shelter and easy food, such as low-lying forest, mountain forests, and rainforests. They are particularly abundant in Argentina, Brazil, Costa Rica, Honduras, Paraguay, and Peru. They use these areas for shelter at night and food access during the day. The canopy of trees allows for protection from threats above. And uh, capuchin monkeys innate the ability to climb trees with ease allows them to escape and hide from predators in the, on the jungle floor. This environment is mutually beneficial for the capuchins and for the ecosystem in which they have to inhabit, rather. This is because they spread their seed leftovers and fecal matter across the forest floor, which help, helps new plants to grow, therefore adding to the already abundant foliage that shelters the capuchin. Behavior. Like most North World monkeys, capuchins are more diurnal and arboreal. Capuchins are poly polygamous and the female females mate throughout the year, but only go to a gestation period once every two years between December and April. The females bear young every two years following a 160 to 180 day gestation. The young cling to their mother's chest until they are larger. Then they move her move to her back. Adult male capuchin rarely take part in care for their young. Juveniles become fully mature within four years for females and eight years for males. In captivity, in captivity, individuals have reached an age of 50 years, although the nat natural life expectancy uh, is only 15 to 25 years. Capuchins live in groups of 60 to 40 member members consisting of related females, their offspring, and several males. Diet. The capuchin monkey feeds on a vast range of, of food types and is more varied than other monkeys in the family. Cividae. They are omnivores and consume a variety of plant parts such as leaves, flower, and fruit, seeds, pith, woody tissue, sugar cane, bulb, and exudates as well as orthropods, mollusks, a variety of vertebrates, and even primates. Recent findings of old stone tools in Cambodian habitats have suggested that recently the Cambodians have switched from small nuts, such as cashews, to larger and harder nuts. Cambodians have been observed to also be particularly good at catching frogs. They are characterized as innovative and extreme foragers because of their ability to acquire sustenance from wild collection of unlikely food, which may assure them with survival in habitats with extreme food limitation. Capuchins live near water, which is living near water, rather, will also eat crabs.
themselves as shellfish by cracking their shells with stones. Social structure. Capuchin monkeys often live in large groups of 10 to 35 individuals within the forest, although they can easily adapt to places colonized by humans. The capuchins have discrete hierarchies that are distinguished by age and sex. Usually, a single male will dominate the group, and they have primary rights to mate with the females of their group. However, the white-headed capuchin groups are led by both an alpha male and an alpha female. Each group will cover a large territory since members must search for the best areas to feed. These primates are territorial animals, distinctly marking a central area of their territory with urine and defending it against intruders, although outer areas may overlap. The stabilization of group dynamics is served through mutual grooming and communication occurs between monkeys through various calls. Their vocal communications have various meanings such as creating contact with one another, warning about a predator, and forming new groups. The social experience of the capuchins directly influences level development of attention in society. They create new social behaviors in multiple groups that signify different types of interactions. These include tests of friendship, displays against enemies, and, and sexual intimacy. This creates social rituals that are designed to test the strength and social bonds in reliance on social learning, mating capuchin females often direct most of their proceptive and mating behaviors towards the alpha male. However, when the female reaches the end of her, her proceptive period, she may sometimes mate with up to six different subordinate males in one day, strictly targeting the alpha male does not happen every time. As some females have been observed to mate with three to four different males, <laughs> when an alpha female and a lower ranking female want to mate with an alpha male, a more dominant female will get the rights to the male over the lower ranking one. Intelligence. The capuchin is considered to be one of the most intelligent New World monkey and is often used in laboratories. The tufted monkey is especially noted for its long-term tool usage. One of the few examples of primate tool used other than by apes and humans upon seeing macaws and bomb nuts cracking them open with their beaks. This monkey was selected on view ribus fruits, a nip off the tip of the fruit and drink down the juice and seemingly discard the rest of the fruit with the nut inside. When the discarded fruits have hardened and become slightly brittle, a capuchin will gather them up again and take them through a large flat boulder where they have previously gathered a few river stones up from a mile away. It will then use the, these stones as some of the way as much as the monkeys to crack open the fruit to get the nut inside. Young capuchins will watch this process and learn from the older, more experienced adults, but it takes them eight years to master this. The learning behavior of capuchins has been demonstrated to be directly linked to a reward rather than curiosity. In 2005, experiments were conducted on the ability of capuchins to use money. After several months of training, the monkeys began 
exhibiting behaviors considered to reflect an understanding of the concept of a medium of exchange that were previously believed to be restricted to humans, such as responding rationally to price shocks. They showed the same propensity to avoid received losses demonstrating by human subjects and investors. During the mosquito season, they crush millipedes and rub the results on their backs. This is a natural insect repellent. Self-awareness. When presented with a reflection in capuchins, monkeys react in a way that indicates an intermediate state between seeing the mayor as another individual and recognizing the image as self. Most animals react to seeing their reflections as if encountering another individual that you do not recognize. They do not recognize. An experiment with capuchins shows that they react to reflection in a strange phenomenon. But not as if, as if seeing a strange capuchin. In the experiment, capuchins were presented as three different scenarios. Seeing an unfamiliar same-sex monkey. On the other side of a clear barrier, seeing a familiar same-sex monkey on the other side of a clear barrier. While my mirror showing a reflection of the monkey. In scenario one, females appeared anxious and avoided eye contact, while males made threatening gestures. In scenario two, there was little reaction by either males or females. When presented with a reflection, females gazed into their own eyes and made friendly gestures such as lip smacking and swaying. Males made more eye contact with strangers or familiar monkeys, but reacted with signs of confusion or distress, such as squealing, curling up on the floor, or trying to escape the test room. Thanks for watching. Please tap the bell notification icon so you never miss my videos. Goodbye. Okay,